Welcome to BizTax Asian Midday Market Watch. Our guest today is Vishnu Varadhan, Head of Economics and Strategy at Mizoho Bank, coming out of Singapore. Now, Vishnu, good to have you on the show again this Monday morning. Good morning, Brian. Always good to be here. Uh, as you can tell, I'm not really out of the, the Monday yet. I, I said good morning instead of afternoon, so here we go. Yeah, so, so did I. It also, I, we're still trapped in this time warp of trying to get Monday sort of cranking away in the start of the week. The last heavy week of work before things start to slow down because of the Chinese New Year holidays. Now, so before we uh, before we get your insights, Vishnu, let's start by taking a look at uh, crypto markets and then moving on to regional markets. So Bitcoin is still at 42,705.6. It's down 0.77%. Ethereum is at 3,264.91. It's down 1.6%. Now, if we look at regional stock markets, We've got the, the Straits Times Index at 3,284.54. It's up marginally 0.08%. The KLCI is at 1,544.27. It is down 0.71%. Uh, Shanghai is at 3,541.52. It's up 0.58%. The ASX All Ordinaries is at 7,747.1. It's up 0.39%. The Nikkei is at 28,332. It's up 0.74%. The Hang Seng is at 24,197.87. It is down 0.74%. And rounding out the numbers, we've got the Kospi, which is at 2,879.44. Uh, it's down 1.45%. So Vishnu, pretty mixed markets. Tell us why. Well, I think markets are looking at many different factors and, and, and really um, did this also form the, the core of our views today, which is dissonance. There's a huge dissonance between uh, the different parts of the market. We, we still have a Fed that's increasingly hawkish. They've not backed down yet. We've also had US retail sales number that came out a lot softer than anticipated. And in the details as well, uh, the numbers suggested that consumers are getting a bit more guarded about spending, at least in, in December. So that leaves a bit of a question mark. And we came through China's Q4 GDP data. Um, didn't slow down as much as feared, but still a slowdown. And, and I think there are more questions than answers with China's stimulus uh, pivot next year, particularly uh, given that we, we still don't see uh, you know, the, the light uh, at the end of the tunnel for the property sector. And we don't know what's happening with tech regulations. Uh, and, and in the midst of it, if you look at markets proper, We've had uh, a little bit of a recovery in equities, but we are still coming off being bludgeoned pretty badly from the risk of in, in equity markets uh, last week. Uh, USD yields are still higher, and we've got a dollar that's uh, a bit softer, though it bounced off the, the bottom at the end of last week, and oil is a lot higher. So markets are trying to figure out exactly where they rest with the risks to demand, as well as the risks from policy, be it the Fed or from China. Now, Vishnu, I want to uh, bring attention to your daily commentary today. What are some of the key aspects that you'd like to highlight? Well, I think one of the things we wanted to think about in, in, the, in, in the daily report is um, we, we started off thinking about, about China uh, in, in terms of the regional uh, focus. And we thought, OK, um, really, the eight, of course, the, total, the final print was 8.1% growth for China in, in all of 2021. Q4 was 4%. So we don't get distracted from two things. One is the base effect still allowed for a good number to be printed in China, but it was a deceleration. 4.9% for Q3 was already below trend and it decelerated further. So the, our big question there and, and the thought for the day is, where is China headed from here? We know the policy wants stimulus, but we also know there are uh, diametrically opposed forces such as the, down, the slowdown in the property market. We don't uh, forget that there's, there's still restructuring and default risks there and that, that the anti-monopolistic uh, regulations in the tech sector. So we don't know exactly how China is going to emerge out of this and Omicron throws into it another, uh, you know, uh, another dimension of uncertainty. And, and the same goes for the US. Recovery so far has been solid. Latest retail numbers don't look so good. Fed turns very hawkish. So the, the inflection is very sharp. And so that leaves more questions and answers as to exactly how much tightening the Fed would do and whether this would actually set back uh, some of the recovery we're seeing in, in the US. So it, it forces us to re-examine 
a lot of assumptions. And we've got three big central bank meetings uh, today, uh, not today, sorry, this week. We've got the BOJ, uh, followed by in, in the region, we have got uh, Bank Nagara Malaysia, uh, and we've also got Bank Indonesia. We think Bank Malaysia, Bank Indonesia, and, and BOJ all are not going to do anything, but BNM and BI are acutely aware that a tightening Fed means that policy will have to shift uh, at some point along the way. They need to see what the trade-offs are. For the POJ, we think they'll be emphatically dovish. Uh, and, and how these translate into uh, the movements in the foreign exchange market and the asset markets, I, I think those are really what we wait to look for, uh, uh, look out for this, this week. Now, Vishnu, as always, thank you very much for your insights and for taking your time to be on the show. My pleasure. Thank you for having me, Brian. Now, we've been speaking to Vishnu Bharadhan, Head of Economics and Strategy at Mizuho Bank on Bistax Asian Midday Market Watch. I'm Brian Fernandez. Please check out this video and podcast on our various platforms as well as our website, www.bistax.asia. Please like and subscribe to our various platforms. Thank you very much for tuning in.